in terms of that let's bring in peter mcguire now he joins us from xm for more peter pleasure to have you on the program let's kick it off with oil because it is the big focus of markets it's been a bit more positive of late certainly seeing a rebound what's your take on those moves well, good morning, Ingrid. Yeah, it's been one-way traffic over the last week. It's been, you know, an enormous trade and up the best part of 7 or $8, and it's had good move, actually, 2% up for uh, this morning's trade. So that momentum, I think, will probably carry on. We've had a good turnaround. Things are positive in the sense of from a consumption number as far as forecasts moving forward. So um, it seems to be, you know, onward and upward at the moment, though we do have expiry tomorrow evening, and uh, we saw what happened last month down to $38 negative. So I'm not suggesting that's going to happen again, but uh, it's always unknown and that's the future of the futures market. Whether or not it goes negative is another story, but do you think we will see a downturn in, in prices ahead of that in the next sort of 24 hours? Well, it's been, you know, it's, if you're looking at the market at the moment, you may see a little bit of profit taking. I wouldn't be surprised and how far it comes off uh, as far as a washout, that's um, I suppose in the lap of the gods. So we'll just got to wait and see. I wouldn't be surprised, maybe a dollar or two coming off it. Um, You know, it's a hard one to speculate, but it's been an enormous week and uh, it's been incredible from a trading perspective and uh, maybe it's just, you know, a little bit of profit taking. So, I mean, in terms of commodities, which commodities are you expecting to outperform in light of of the economy's reopening, which we're starting to see around the globe with this coronavirus crisis? We are starting to see us come to the other side of that. Of course, second wave is always a risk. But in light of what we're seeing right now, what are the commodities best placed to outperform off the back of it? Well, we said last Monday together, Ingrid, gold was sitting at about 1697. We said, well, there's plenty of upside for that one. And it's certainly delivered because it's now at about 1760. So that's not a bad uh, weak advancement. We've seen crude oil. We mentioned the Dr. Copper. There were plenty of markets mm. to trade without Dr. Copper. And it's been very range bound. There's been no movement there. So I think if you can look at those two as particulars, uh, silver's been very strong as well. So probably the precious metals and from an energy sector. So They've performed very well over the last month, where if you're looking at US equities, they've been very much range bound and sideways in, compared to what those uh, certain commodity markets have done. What so about I think that there's a little bit more movements for gold. Yeah, okay. What about in terms of trade wars then? I mean, is that going to push gold even higher from here just because of the concern that trade wars is bringing? I mean, it's really res- the, the resurgence of that discussion has really taken place over the past few days in particular. Absolutely. You know, we're understanding as far as China and the US and what their thoughts are as far as Trump. So he will look at, you know, it's an election campaign year. I'm sure that he's going to actually turn the heat up on that China talks. I'm not suggesting tariffs, but everything else in between. And there's plenty of upside there, I think, that'll fuel the gold price. So, yes, um, many analysts are saying you're going to see a 2100 number, maybe even by, you know, 2000 by this year. So, Uh, there's plenty of potential there and uh, we're probably about six months away from that election and probably the best part of a couple of hundred dollars can be added over the short time. I mean, in terms of what we see here at home in Australia, obviously we we talk about metals and mining in particular and and we know China's, you know, huge for us in terms of trading partner, in terms of everything. But what does this mean for some of the metals and miners here at home, given the fact that the trade wars seem to be escalating between us and China too? I mean, there's reports on the weekend that our trade minister couldn't even get China to return the calls. Yeah, well, I think it's going to be demonstrated first off, Ingrid, as far as the value of our dollar, and there could be further mm. softness there. So a push down as far as our dollar is concerned from a commodity base, then uh, that's against the US. Then the, you're looking at the other side, possibly, you know, structural weakness across that how our sector and that's going to be very very tough moving forward from an unemployment number and what impact we have as far as supplying just trying to look at other alternatives and uh, you know it's it's going to be a tough time we've never gone down this road before and we've normally had a very good strong strategic relationship with china but now with scomo's um you know scenario of banding together with 62 other countries and more will follow suit I think it's going to be a tough time ahead for us and uh, our China relations. Yeah, okay. And is that, uh, you know, is that the biggest, obviously, you say for the Aussie dollar? Because we could certainly see a lot of weakness in the Aussie off the back of this. It's directly related. So how low do you think the Aussie could go? Yep. Well, we had a good move up from really that mid-March up to, you know, 
it was the stellar trade. Uh, probably 62 could be a number that you'd have to think in the short run. Um, there's not a great degree of good numbers coming out of Australia. We saw those unemployment numbers last week and everything seems to be ratcheting down, even though we're starting to open up. So maybe we're going to give a little bit of those gains back and uh, possibly 62, 62, 5 could be a new number that we need to consider, Ingrid, over the next month or two. Do you have a view on the US dollar going forward, just in terms of what we're seeing there? Because obviously we do see it, you know, usually fall in, in good times. And of course, as we go forward and economies start to reopen, you know, that's certainly a positive. So you'd maybe see the US dollar start to lose some ground. What's your take on that? Well, you would have thought so, but they're sitting at 100.5, that US dollar in index, and it's been, you know, that 99 to 100 sort of number over the last matter of week or so. It's very, very range bound from very, very tightly traded. So, you know, maybe from a stimulus side, I think, you know, the Fed and Congress and everyone getting behind the US, they'll naturally do whatever they have to do to get, you know, make US great again, as Trump, Trump's mantra with an election year. So that could underpin everyone else is in negative territory or nearly zero rates. So there's every chance you could see the US dollar possibly hold at these sort of numbers. You're not going to put money into the yen. You're not going to look at the eurozone. They're very, very weak data and Japan going into possibly a recession. Those numbers will be confirmed over the next 24 hours. So it's not a good time for any other currency in the, in the short run versus that US dollar in group. So much to watch this week um, in terms of central bank speak as well. Are you watching closely to hear how um, what Powell says? And also we've got our local RBA governor speaking as well, but pa Federal Reserve Powers will be speaking later in the week. We just heard a huge speech from him last week. So there's certainly no shortage of rhetoric from central bankers. No, there's not. And uh, look, as everything gets released and more more um, you know comments come to the market, they'll be taken on board. And from a trading perspective, that's the, they're the cues that any trader looks at. From You're looking at your technical side, but also, of course, the fundamentals. What happens? On the short term, what impact does the Eurozone do? Where, is, where are um, Powell's comments? And you've got also, I think, that undercurrent there of uneasiness and uncertainty. And that's really going to, I think, the perfect storm for the likes mm. of gold and uh, in the short term, that US dollar, what where traders look at. So I don't think equities are going to be a standout. I feel as though the gold market, as we mentioned, Ingrid, is the time for a little bit of onward and upward from here. All right, watch your space. Pete McGuire, always a pleasure. Thanks for joining us this Monday morning. Good morning. Thank you, Ingrid.